Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to cover our lecture number seven of our course, which is called Microprocessor Systems and Interfacing. And today's topic is Assembler Directive. So let's see what is an Assembler Directive. Assembler Directives are instructions uh, to compiler, not to the uh, CPU, which is an important thing. Uh, so basically, we know that normally we write instruction which are given to a compiler or assembler and they actually convert it into uh, machine code so that it become understandable by CPU itself. So instructions are written for CPU, but we uh, process it by compiler. But assembler directives are instructions which are for compiler, not uh, to be converted, but compiler use them to as an instruction so that it, uh, it it come to know, okay, what he has supposed to do, right? So let's see what are the examples of instruction and assembler directive. So move little to working is an important instruction. We have done it multiple times. That is why I'm taking examples. So it is an instruction, but to CPU, that means this is an instruction you will write in assembly language code. It will provide it to compiler and provide, pro, compiler will convert this instruction into machine code so that it can be understood by CPU and CPU will then execute the instruction. But assembly directive is not the thing. For example, ORG. ORG is instruction to assembler. So this instruction goes to only assembler or compiler, right? Uh, so uh, assembler come to know about certain parameters and what are those parameters we know. So these instructions will never uh, pass to CPU. So CPU will never know about these instructions. That is why these are known as assembler directives. So these are directions which are given for assemblers, right? Uh, well-known examples are ORG, Equate, SAT, and AND. So we will see these examples in coming lectures uh, multiple times. So let's cover Equate. What is an Equate uh, as an assembler directive or what it does? So to define a constant or a fixed value. So whenever we are interested to define a constant or a fixed value, then we use this uh, Equate. So let me provide you an example. This is an important uh, uh, assembly directive. That is why we're gonna run a, through a program. For example, we want to add a number, which is move little to working two, four hacks, right? And another number, let's say, move little to working five, zero hacks. Uh, sorry, uh, let, let, let's first save that number into certain location. For example, we save it into move working to file in certain location, let's say zero hacks. So now uh, what is going to happen? Uh, zero, zero location, file, location, file, location, which is zero, zero hacks will become equals to two, four hacks, right? So that is the uh, purpose of this instruction. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another instruction. Let's say we write add working to file, right? And watch file zero, zero hacks. So again, okay, we need another number. Number is move literal to working, uh, which is two, five hacks. So now working register is equal to what? Working register is equal to two, five hacks, right? And now we're gonna add these two numbers. So one, first number is basically written in working register, which is two, two, five. Another number is written in file location zero, zero, which is two, four. So we're gonna add them. And let's say we put the result uh, in for working register itself. So I will mention it. So what will happen? Or you can say I'm mentioning files, so result will go and store in file location result. So that means uh, this uh, result will be stored in file location, which is zero, zero hacks, right? Or I can simply write only address, so at zero, zero hacks, right? This is the uh, idea of the program. So if I'm gonna explain you, uh, we have two numbers. First number is what? Uh, two, four hacks. Another number is two, five hacks, and we are adding them and result is being stored in file register zero, zero hacks, right? So uh, we can make this program much more simple if we use equate assembler directive. For example, we can fix these number using equate. Uh, so how one can do it? Let's write the code. Okay, we're gonna write the same program, but this time we're gonna use it uh, in more 
understandable fashion for programmer itself. So let's say we use equate and we use num1 for first number. So equate, num1, equate, and num1 is basically what? Two, four hacks. So num1 variable is now associated with two, four. It's like you are assigning this num value to this num1 variable, right? Another number, which is, uh, let's say num2, and now we are equating it to, uh, let's say two, five hacks, right? So now whenever I'm gonna write num2, that means compiler will understand, okay, that means two, five, right? Okay, another thing, let's say result, which was stored in location zero, 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 I can, so I can simply write result equate equal to zero, zero hacks. So whenever uh, I mean to write result, that will consider it as zero, zero hacks. Now I'm gonna write the same program, but it will be much more understandable. First number will be move little to working num1. So now compiler will come to know, okay, num1, num1 means what? Two, four hacks, right? So next command would be what? Uh, move it towards file register to so move working to file. Let's, we are moving to word result. So now, now we know that uh, num1 was sent to what? Result location. Another, uh, another instruction which we saw is basically move little to working, which is number two. So num2, and now compiler will understand or assembler will understand, okay, num2 means what? Uh, zero, zero hacks, sorry, two, five hacks because we have already defined it using equate, okay? And then we will be using this uh, add working with file and now we will be storing result, right? So that means result will be the location in which uh, result will be stored, right? So we are performing that same thing. Uh, earlier we performed, the we, we wrote the code uh, for without any equate uh, similar directive, but here we are writing the code. So what is the difference here? That was our first code. Let me highlight it. Okay, that is basically this one. So I'm gonna, this is the code, okay? And this is the second code. So what is the difference between them? The difference is basically we are uh, using uh, something which is now easily understandable uh, in this case, right? Because we know that there are two numbers, which is num1 and num2, and both are being added and result is, uh, and the result is being stored in location, which is result, right? Uh, and how compiler knows about it? Because we have defined them over here using this equate directive. So that is the functionality of equate. And I hope you have understand uh, how it uh, clarify the things for a programmer. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. And let's say what is next. So we will be coming here. So next is basically sat, and it is again uh, used to define constant value or a fixed address, right? So it is the same thing. So what is the difference between sat and equate? So the difference is this value may be assigned, reassigned later, right? That means if we define two, five hacks for num2, we can also define later on the program, the same value two, five hacks for another variable, for example, uh, zero, uh, for example, location two, right? So we can actually use the same values using the sat uh, for another uh, number, right? So that means uh, both are used for same thing, but equate ca value can never be reassigned, but sat uh, can be assigned or reassigned values, right? Or sat can be used for reassigned values. Okay, another important assembler directive is ORG. Uh, and why is it, it is used? It is used to define the beginning of beginning address of the code. So whenever we gonna write our program, first of all, you will see that we will be writing something like that, right? We will be writing that, okay, this is ORG, ORG, and this, we are starting our location, for example, at 2A hex. I hope you have seen some lab example we have covered in this tutorial series uh, in which we, we are observing this instruction. So why we are using this instruction? Because uh, this is used to define, okay, the code will be placed at this address, right? So uh, we can actually use ORG zero, zero hacks. That means code will be placed at this address. So ORG is used to define the beginning address of the code. Okay. Similarly, there is an, uh, there is an uh, other assembler directive, which is used to define the end of the code. For if you have complete the code and now you don't need to put anything inside the code. So you have to put and so that compiler will come to know that, okay, this is the point where I will be stop my translation 
uh, into machine code. So this is the end of the code. So if you write anything after this statement, which is end, uh, it will be considered as comment. I hope you have understand what is end. Okay, let's deal with list. What is list? It is something unique, which is found only in pick assembler. We know that assembler directives are instruction to what assembler. So uh, this list this directive is something which is only available in pick assembler because it tells the compiler the chip of the uh, chip a particular chip of the particular chip used by uh, uh, assembler right for example in case of pick 18f452 which we are going to program we we may write what we going to write we we can say that we can actually use this directive list p is equal to p 18f 452 right that means we are going to use this model p18f452 so pick uh, what kind of pick chip we are using we are using p18f452 so we will be using this assembler directive uh, just to let the no compiler that okay this is the uh, specific uh, chip that we are going to use in this uh, code right or this code is written for this specific uh, chip okay uh, that is the concept of uh, uh, assembler directive and we will be moving onwards. So what, which one is our uh, next assembler directive? It is called include. This is very simple uh, assembler directive. It lets know what are the associated libraries for a specific chip for which we are actually programming. So if you are uh, programming for uh, big 18 f 452 you need to write hash include uh, p18f452.inc so compiler will come to know uh, that okay this is this code uh, needs certain library which are associated to, to this specific chip config this is again an important directive uh, uh, assembler directive which is especially uh, important for or very critical for the uh, hardware burning point of view because it defines the configuration bits of specific chip we are programming so if we define it uh, incorrectly it may uh, harm the chip so it may um, cause the chip will become unusable for the next time so that is why it's very critical and we whenever we are going to use it uh, we have to use it very carefully right so we're gonna see in coming labs uh, how one can actually define these uh, how one can use this config directive uh, especially when we are going to burn the code in the KTNF microcontroller. Okay, it is used to be define the beginning address of the code. Of course, it is like uh, where you are actually placing the code. We will be seeing these things in coming lectures. Radix. Radix is something which is uh, used to change the default number system. Normally, if you write anything in the PIC uh, assembler, you it will be considered as uh, for example, hexadecimal number. But if one is interested to change the default number system to some other number system, so one can actually uh, use this uh, approach. Uh, for example, if uh, I'm going to write uh, move literal to working zero zero hacks that zero 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 that that means zero zero is written in hacks. But if one is interested to change the idea of the uh, or the number system, you can simply use radix and let's say I'm want to use uh, dash so it will consider the number system become decimal right so you can always use any other number system if you want to change the default number system but we will not be using it so frequently because in this course we will be dealing with hexadecimal number which we are not going to change but this is an assembler directive which is available for you to if you want to change the default number system you can use this assembler directive Okay, that's it from this lecture. Today we learned an important topic. I hope you have uh, understand the concept. If you have any query, you can post your comments or your queries in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.